Welcome back, beautiful and amazing human beings. And yeah, uh, looking at the news today, there's a lot of dumb things happening, which is why we're going to cover the dumbassification of our society. More specifically, a critique of the media, which are vampires that feed off human logic and spirit. We're also going to cover war, just outrageous YouTube hypocrisy, and the bigger truth behind Brett Kavanaugh that the mainstream media is, of course, not talking about. Now, before we start, just know that this show is supported by you and uh, pretty much you, you, you guys only, especially through our t-shirt store on Teesprings, which the link will be in the description below, where you can get t-shirts to represent your discontent with society and also help us fund an independent media operation now of course a lot of the news today that we're going to be covering is regarding the un general assembly a very significant meeting of leaders <coughs> puppets who were brought in by the banksters and big corporations <coughs> that have all come together to meet at the united nations to discuss global relations and of course bigger geopolitical issues at this annual meeting a very newsworthy event that of course the western mainstream media is deciding to shift and redirect their focus more specifically on the comments of donald trump in which yesterday he said that his administration has accomplished more than any other administration before him in his short tenure to which he was laughed at by people at the u.n general assembly and then saying that he didn't expect that reaction but it's okay with many critics saying that at least trump brought the world together even if it was a few moments of laughter and yeah that was the biggest story that the media in large decided to concentrate on and push out there to the general public while at the same time the western media decided to mock and make fun of donald trump because he put a diet coke inside of his glass instead of wine during the meetings he had with other world leaders and even though diet coke is absolutely horrible for you especially with all the aspartame and all the other crap in there the media forgot to regard the fact that Donald Trump's brother did die of alcoholism. There is a major substance abuse problem in the United States. And even though this shouldn't be mocked for obvious reasons, it is also just trivial and dumb. And what this really all amounts to is not only just a distraction, but a huge disservice while other important issues like conflict and war are pretty much swept underneath the rug or just outright lied about with total incompetency like we saw from the BBC that incorrectly transcribed Donald Trump's speech to the United Nations saying that he said, quote, war will follow instead of what he actually said, which was more will follow. And the BBC incredulously didn't even delete that tweet, but later tweeting out a clarification saying, hashtag, our bad, our bad, really? Really? And this is the same queen-funded news organization that Facebook and Google does deem an authoritative voice that they are pushing out in front of all the alternative media that they are censoring it for. Yeah, that is one of the news organizations that the big tech monopolies are pushing forward while, of course, censoring voices like the ones that you're watching right now. And of course, while all of this dumbassness occurs with everyone's eyes and ears on it because it is prioritized and pushed out there to you not only by the monopolies but all the media conglomerates out there the real issues are just getting ignored and i specifically wanted to talk about the larger issue the bigger elephant in the room and that of course the conflict that is building up between iran and the united states and the u.s representation of the united nations could be best characterized by the onion that fictitiously made up a quote by Donald Trump's UN Secretary Nikki Haley fictionally saying, quote, the U.S. will no longer sit idly by while Iran continues to exist. And that, of course, was the very clear sentiment that was represented by Donald Trump, especially when he sat down with Israel's Prime Minister Netanyahu. And Iran has been the vocal talking point of both of these countries, especially since recently Russia has decided to supply Syria with S-300 missile defense systems, which, of course, will be used against Israel that has been attacking them over over 200 times within the last few years which of course they claim is mainly against the Iranian forces there 
U.S. Secretary of State Pompeo also had very harsh words slamming Europe for planning to circumvent the U.S. sanctions on Iran and conduct business with them. While, of course, John Bolton, the bloodthirsty neocon war hawk that he is, was just more bloodthirsty, saying that there'll be hell to pay for Europe, and continued more saber-rattling, calling for and fueling for war with Iran. And this obsession with Iran, which really does not benefit the United States, but only benefits some of the U.S. allies, like Israel and Saudi Arabia, have led to many disastrous actions especially in Yemen, creating one of the worst humanitarian crises, which is only escalating as of yesterday, with the United States helping the country of Oman militarize their border in order to not allow refugees from leaving that conflict, which even the AP admitted the United States is on the side of Al-Qaeda, mainly fighting against Houthi Iranian-backed rebels, and even a larger refugee crisis in Syria that knowingly spawned ISIS and other radical Islamic groups that the United States, Israel, and Saudi Arabia supported in order to oust Bashar al-Assad, which of course has a close relationship with Iran. And again, no benefit to the United States nor the world with the rise of radical Islamic terrorism that has spread because of this and worsening of relations with other countries like China, which of course does business and have relations with both Syria and Iran. And this neoconservative wet dream of John Bolton and other bloodthirsty war hawks who have never really fought a war in their life has definitely hindered relationships with the European Union, Russia, Iran, China, which of course have just unveiled a new global payment system that would be independent of the United States. This of course with the looming trade wars and tough talk between the US and China, which of course paves the path for a, a really disastrous dumb idea, which which is, of course, not being criticized by the mainstream media because Donald Trump is freaking drinking Diet Coke out of his wine glass. That, that, yeah. And this, of course, is a reality that the U.S. military industrial complex is well aware of. And that's why they are even officially preparing for a three-front long war against China and Russia. Now, I'm not saying that this is definitely going to happen, but this is the reality of the trajectory that the United States is on which is something definitely worth considering, especially with all the distractions put out there by the media and not focusing on the bigger issues and bigger problems that we are on the trajectory for facing, especially with the larger push for Donald Trump and his administration for a conflict with Iran. Now, moving on to our next story, of course, a lot of people talking about the issues that we are talking about here face a lot of censorship, especially with the fact that the Israeli and American government both work with Facebook and other social media monopolies and have the power to censor and stop anyone that they don't like. Israel even uses artificial intelligence to scan videos on Twitter and Facebook and then automatically logs complaints against the people making these videos with intelligence and law enforcement in their countries. To make this situation worse, even yesterday, Twitter just announced that they are going to be now banning dehumanizing comments with, of course, the help of users, with, of course, changing their policy to a more generalized set of standards that, of course, they will abuse and use politically, which unless you've been sleeping underneath the rock, can't miss because their bias is very, very clear with their actions of banning, suppressing a lot of people, very publicly people on the right, but also a lot of anti-establishment people. And the reactionary boot-licking censorship mob could be definitely characterized by the recent ruling of a Swedish ad watchdog that decided to say that this meme is now officially sexist and quote degrading and discriminatory against women. This of course prompted a lot of internet users to meme the actual attack of this meme, pointing out just how stupid this whole report is since it has nothing to do with gender discourse. There's so many important things happening in this world, and for this to be the main issue and concern for these people is just utterly insane. 
And this perfectly segues into the next story that I wanted to talk about with, of course, a major YouTube channel owner being arrested over child sex abuse. This is specifically about the YouTube channel Seven Supergirl, whose founder had a combined 178 million subscribers over his channels that featured daily videos for more than 20 girls ranging in age from 8 to 18. Again, specifically advertising them as under 18 and doing really weird, creepy stuff. Having little girls dress up in bathing suits, tying them up. And this was a channel, by the way, that we were speaking out against months ago. Philip DeFranco, another YouTuber, Tosh.0, also made this an issue saying, how can YouTube have this sort of horrible, degenerate crap out there abusing children, specifically targeted at what obviously was very clear, the pedophile audience, as one of their creators and as a monetized channel. Meanwhile, this channel and other channels like me get completely demonetized. I caught YouTube, even with other channels, whenever my name is either in the tags, description, or titles, automatically demonetized, put up for a review, making sure no one sees the videos, age restricting our videos that don't deserve to be age restricted, but this channel is still up. And this is an issue that YouTube is actually aware of and even made a public comment about it saying that for now they demonetized the channel after he was arrested and that they will make a bigger determination after the court hearings are done. And you might say to yourself, oh, good on YouTube, waiting to see what actually happens here. And I'm saying, no, you look at the videos, they are disturbing to even look at. That content, that content right now, YouTube is saying, yeah, yeah, okay, put little girls in bikinis, tie them up, make a whole channel just for pedophiles. Yeah, yeah, sure, Let, let's make sure they could get off, that's fine, let's keep that up there. Alex Jones spreading his craziness in political discourse. No, 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 totally delete that. That's, but we'll keep this up there for now. <sighs> Seriously. Again, this is just, just insane. Knowing the crap that I have to deal with with YouTube and for them to make this decision, that, I, I have no words. I'm just speechless. Now, in a related story, there's more controversy regarding Donald Trump's pick for the Supreme Court Justice, Brett Kavanaugh, who now has three accusers against him, accusing him of sexual misconduct, which, of course, he is denying. With most of the allegations coming out from incidences close to 35 years ago, many people are automatically thinking that he is guilty, deeming him a sexual predator, and of course attacking him, galvanizing political support so he does not get nominated. And as of today, there is a third accuser against Brett Kavanaugh, who is accusing Kavanaugh as a high school student in the early 1980s with spiking the drinks of girls at house parties with grain alcohol and or drugs to cause girls to quote lose inhibition and their ability to say no later saying so the girls quote could then be gang raped in a side room or bedroom by a train of numerous boys saying that she became the victims where Brett Kavanaugh was present these are of course very serious allegations that many people on the right question saying that this third accuser doesn't identify anyone else at the parties the victims the gang and rapists and they are raising the questions of why she kept going to these parties which she admitted in her testimony if this was happening and no one was reporting it as of now even 60 classmates of Kavanaugh have signed a petition saying that they have never even met this third accuser and of course Kavanaugh is responding by saying that this is ridiculous from the Twilight Zone and that quote I don't know who this is and this never happened now of course we have two very different sides of the story of what actually happened here that is being extremely politicized obviously because of his potential nomination to the Supreme Court. If this event actually unfolded like this accuser is saying, of course, Brett Kavanaugh shouldn't be in the Supreme Court. He should be in jail. Now, this is a very difficult story because it's very difficult to understand who is telling the truth here.
here. But if actions like this happen, even if you are a witness to, it is important to report them right away. And the fact that these are just coming out now, days before his vote on whether he will be a Supreme Court justice or not, leaves a lot of skepticism and doubt in many people's minds. And the way that this story is covered compared to other allegations against other politician definitely leaves a lot of questions and I'm saying this definitely not being a fan of Kavanaugh. Kavanaugh's decisions in the judicial system are utterly outrageous and of course people are not seeing who Kavanaugh really is because of the media's direction of how they cover this story but the ACLU recently released a report on Brett Kavanaugh and his previous decisions and they're definitely outrageous. This is the same man that said that, oh, it's not a violation of the Fourth Amendment if the U.S. government spies on you. He was one of the major proponents behind the Patriot Act and, of course, stands for war, for torture, for a big national security, big brother state. These are very important issues that Kavanaugh believes in and will be making major decisions if he is selected into the Supreme Court, which I hope he's not, because he clearly does not believe in international law, believes that the U.S. government could get away with horrible acts, whether it's murder, torture, spying, or committing other atrocities in foreign countries if it, quote, protects national security interests and has even ruled before that military contractors cannot be held liable to human rights abuses, even being immune from torture, because these corporations were contractors operating under the control of the U.S. military. He even denied a remedy for American citizens who were detained and abused by FBI agents overseas, and his decisions mainly rule against constitutional rights of the American person in favor of, of course, U.S. national security interests, which the United States has abused many times. So in short, I do hope Kavanaugh does have a fair hearing and a fair recourse against all the accusations against him, and the people could make up their mind after looking at the evidence presented against him with all these sexual abuse allegations. Everyone deserves a fair trial, and political bipartisan hackery deters us from innocent until proven guilty a major principle of this country which by the way Kavanaugh doesn't really believe from his past rulings and even though he doesn't believe in that I still hope he has a fair trial against his accusers and that the truth comes out about who this person is even though I completely disagree with him and I believe it would be detrimental if he does become a sitting member of the U.S. Supreme Court. So yeah, that's my report for today. If you think I was wrong on anything, which I know you probably will uh, find something, let me know in the comment section below. I always answer questions within the first hour. I always appreciate your feedback and the ability to learn from you amazing people. If this video resonated with you, please share it with your friends and family members. You guys are more important than ever, especially with our videos being shadow banned as they are. And most importantly, thank you for watching, sharing, donating, and being a part of this independent media venture. I love you guys. Stay tuned for more.